and Negro students going to the same school. And the big question is, can they get along together? Some people are worried about our kids. I'm not. But I've seen kids like these in trouble, real trouble. It happened quite a few years ago, over at Fairgrounds Park, just across the street. we did not know, we did not understand. That which we did not understand, we feared. Fear, the beginning of hate. And yet there was no reason to hate. St. Louis was a quiet city. We all used the same library and the same parks and the same railroad station and public transportation. But what did we really share in common? <laughs> These children didn't know each other. They could get up in the morning and ride the same bus to school, but they were strangers. They had only one natural meeting place 
the public school. What goes through a child's mind when he learns he's equal but separate? Separate from the normal, the accepted, and the best. And for the teacher of segregated classes, there were other problems. Some classes were overcrowded. Too many kids to teach. A few blocks away, there were classes that didn't have enough students. Oh, we could talk a lot about good citizenship. We could study the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. We could talk to our segregated classes about equality and the rights of man. But what could we say that would bring children together? So now we're integrated. 11 St. Louis high schools, no problems. Our school, one incident. At least that's what the papers are calling it. One incident, will it be the last or the first? The kids won't tell you or can't. Only one person really knows. And he isn't talking. Maybe he'll listen. How are you, Vincent? Vincent? How are you? One angry boy can cause a lot of trouble. Teachers know all the answers. And special meetings aren't much help. But at least in St. Louis, we didn't walk into desegregation with our eyes closed. People in this town knew it was coming. Our textbook committees met together and worked together. Teachers who had been trained in similar teachers' colleges, taught similar courses. When they came together, they met as equals. White and Negro teachers in St. Louis met in human relations workshops, in committees of their teachers' associations, and in other professional organizations. All this before the Supreme Court decision. And while the Supreme Court studied the Constitution to see if segregation was legal, students in St. Louis were meeting on their own to find out if integration could work. Intergroup youth had delegates from all the high schools in St. Louis. Well, all I know is at our school, there's some kids who just don't like colored people. Well, hey, some of the kids at our school don't like white people either. Well, I don't mean to say anything about anybody, but I've heard and read what goes on in Negro neighborhoods delinquency and things like that. Well, I live in a pretty fancy neighborhood, and we had some kids that broke into school and wrecked us. Well, I think it's the individual that counts. How are you going to get to know a person unless you meet them? When the Supreme Court ruled that segregation was illegal, these children were ready. And the school administration was ready. The schools could learn from the mistakes of the past, Plans for an orderly and gradual integration were prepared months in advance. 
But school plans were only paper. The real decision was up to the community. Support came from organized labor, the Metropolitan Church Federation, the Catholic Church, the Jewish Community Relations Council. And support for integration also came from some unorganized groups. Each person in the community had his own reasons for supporting integration. Some of us thought of the inefficiency of a segregated school system, two teachers' colleges where one would be enough. Some remembered a deserted school, empty because no one could decide whether this school should be white or colored. Some thought of St. Louis University, integrated since 1949, the Lutheran and Catholic parochial schools integrated since 1947. Washington University integrated since 1952. And some may have remembered the words of Earl Warren, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. To separate children from others of similar age and qualifications solely because of their race generates a feeling of inferiority as to their state in the community that may affect their hearts and minds in a way unlikely ever to be undone. That may affect their hearts and minds in a way unlikely ever to be undone. But the biggest group in the community was yet to be heard from. Parents. They've never met each other, never sat down in the same room together. But in the weeks before integration was to begin, they came together in schoolrooms and basements all over St. Louis to talk about their children. No questions? Don't tell me you don't have any. Well, now, I think you all know why we're here this evening. The decision to desegregate the St. Louis public schools has been made. And it's going to depend on how we do the job in our own neighborhoods as just how that decision is going to work out. That's why we're glad that your PTA and your Patrons Alliance has helped us to call you to this meeting this evening. We have some guests here. They don't like to be called experts to answer your questions. First. Mr. Bohannon of the Urban League, and Dr. Morris, who is Chief Psychologist of the Board of Education, and I'm sure you all know Mr. Barnes, our principal, and many of you also know our doctor, Mr. Buchan. And I am Virgil Border of the National Conference of Christians and Jews. Now, who has the first question? The real questions are the ones people don't like to talk about in public, but they come out one way or another. All right. I wonder about the health standards, and I wonder if we're going to have any problems. She's worried about communicable diseases. I would like to know what percentage of white and Negro students that will be going to our school. He's heard that Negroes are taking over the neighborhood. Is our school going to be able to keep its high standards? She's been told that Negroes are less intelligent than whites. I'd like to know what our school plans on doing about things like social dancing. He's worried about intermarriage. I think I can answer the medical question. All students are required to take medical examinations, and we just don't let the sick ones in. I can't give you the exact percentages of Negroes and whites who will attend our school next year, but the plan is to have the students attend the school in their district. Now, if a student wants to attend the school where he's going now until he graduates, that will be permitted. But there won't be any transfer students, and the new students will have to attend the school in their district. I don't want to start in your room, but I've heard said that some people are not going to send their children to a mixed school. Well, if you want to take your family and move them out of this district into an all-white district, you can do that. 
But the school board has ruled that the children in a district will attend a school in that district, and I'm sure they're going to enforce that law. It's our job to make our school a school worth attending, and I'm sure we're going to do that. Concerning the problem of standards, I would like to speak as a school psychologist. Our division administers more than 100,000 tests of intelligence and achievement annually. The results of these tests show that both Negro and white children make scores ranging from the lowest possible to the highest possible. So you're worried because you think high school social functions might cause intermarriage. Well, you needn't be. The long experience of integrated public school education in American communities bears out the contention that integrated public school education is neither lonely heart clubs nor training grounds for intermarriage. He still wants to know if these men want their children to marry into other races. May I add one thing here? It seems to me the chief role of the school is to educate the mind, and the role of the home is to supervise morals. It's always been that way, and integration isn't going to change it. The minority has its questions, too. Do you think that all of the teachers will be able to understand so many different kinds of children? She wants to know if white teachers will be fair to Negro students. Do you think we're going to have disciplinary problems in our school? He's heard a rumor that white boys are planning to beat up Negro boys when school opens. I'd like to answer those questions. I'm a teacher at the school, and we all have problems about desegregation. But doesn't it all come down to, come down to this? Are we moving too quickly? Should we wait? Well, I guess I don't have a real good answer to that question of whether we're moving too quickly. But, well, all I want to say is that I've been a teacher for 12 years, and I've been a pretty good disciplinarian, and I intend to go on keeping good discipline. And, well, that's not to say that we haven't had our troubles. Of course, kids wouldn't be kids if they didn't get into scrapes. That's just normal. But our job is to teach, to teach fairly and honestly and equally. And that's what we're going to do. More brotherhood speeches? See the papers? Here you got a boy in the hospital. No, I don't have a boy in the hospital. We weren't ready for it. I could have told them. We should have waited a year or two. Brotherhood. should have found out last fall, on the first day of integrated school. We were ready then. There were detectives out of uniform. The newspapers cooperated by avoiding scare headlines and by keeping their cameramen and their cameras out of sight.
these preparations for the most natural sight in the world, kids going to school. No problem the first day, no stories for the papers. Now the real problems began. An integrated class with the worst kind of segregation, self-segregation. What do you do? Mix them up? Seat them alphabetically? This is a class in problems in American government. We'll be studying government on the local, the state, and the national level. And we'll be taking a look at the rules under which we govern ourselves in a democracy. It takes some time for the teacher to forget whether he's talking to a white student or a colored student. And they forget too. And become individuals. There's a hard worker. A bright one, but he lacks incentive. A dull one. But each of them an individual to be worked with, stimulated, encouraged. But that was before our incident. Our incident. Vincent shoots his water pistol at another boy and squirts a Negro girl instead. So the girl tells her friends and Vincent gets beat up by some Negro boys. Kid stuff. Only one kid was white and the other was colored. And that makes a racial incident. Newspaper stories, special meetings. And where do we go from here? Good luck. Before we start today, I want to say something about an an incident. No. No. We'll hold that for a bit and get on with the regular class business. The business of committee reports. Tony, are you ready with your committee report? This is a committee on municipal government. 
The first report is a joint report on the Board of Aldermen. It was assigned to Tony Young and Vincent Martin. It will be presented by Vincent. This is the report on the Board of Aldermen. It is, it is a joint report prepared by Tony and, and me. Prepared by Tony and presented by me. There are 28 members on the Board of Aldermen. They're elected by the voters of our community for the purpose of running our city. The, the qualifications for such a position uh, are, are as follows. The candidate must be t 25 years of age and a resident of the district, which he or she, as, as the case may be, is elected from. The advantage of the aldermatic system is that it gives equal representation to each district. A teacher's job is to teach, whether it be in St. Louis or any other place. And the test of integration is what happens in the classroom. And my kids are going to pass that test 